We have this question for a homework class down on page 150. We get these four bobsledders uh, pushing this sled. Um, if we look at the beginning of the question, it says the four-man bobsled event in the Winter Olympics with a maximum mass of bobsled, two riders, uh, pilot, brake man, 630 kilograms. What you've got to be careful of here is, when you read this, is recognize that um, it doesn't say this is the mass of this bobsled in this question. It just says this is the maximum mass. Hey, maybe the mass of this bobsled is the maximum amount, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's, maybe it's lower than that. If you're given a number that says, look, here's the rule. You're allowed to have this much mass. Okay? That's important, but not in physics. Okay? In physics, what we care about is not what the rule is. We care about what's actually happening, whether you're following the rule or not. So in this question, for us, because we're doing physics right now, uh, all, we all only care about the mass of the guys and the bobsled, the mass of the people that are in the bobsled and the bobsled itself. It says, during a practice run, riders A and B push on the bobsled with this force, these forces. Here's my bobsled. I can tell my artistic ability is not necessarily the strongest. Okay? Uh, if I was a bobsled designer, my bobsled probably wouldn't go that well because it's rather square-shaped. And I don't know when the last time you saw a square-shaped bobsled is. They tend to be a little more aerodynamical, aerodynamic than that. That's OK. That's OK. There's my bobsled. Rider A is pushing with a force of 1,220 newtons. And rider B is pushing with a force of 1,200 newtons. Now, it doesn't really matter where I label those forces as long as I label them in the right direction and as long as I label them more or less the right length. You can see that my 1,200 there is ever so slightly shorter than my 1,220, as it should be. All right, what do we got here? We've got a mass of 255, 98, and 97. Two, two riders? What about the other two riders? They're yeah, they're pushing. It doesn't matter what they weigh, not right now, because they're not in the sled. They're pushing the sled. All we care about is the force they're pushing with, not how heavy they are. Uh, I'm going to label the mass of the sled and the two riders, however. 255 plus 98 plus 97 gives me 410. Is that right? No, I mean, what is it, 450? Yeah, it wasn't even close. 450 kilograms. Technically, the mass is not part of a free body diagram. Technically, it's only forces in a free body diagram. But look, if we're going to draw a free body diagram, that pretty much takes care of our givens. We might as well just tack on the mass, even though it's technically not required. Um, what else we got here? Oh, there's a force of friction of 430. Which way is friction going to act? Yeah, if I'm pushing this sled to the right, then friction is going to act to the left. And it's going to be a much smaller force it's only 430 newtons. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah. We want to find the acceleration of the, the sled and the pilot and the brake man. Um, is there anything else acting here? What is it? Gravity. There's gravity acting here. Yeah. So let's, I'm going to draw that, gravity acting down. But, but, and there's a big but here, there is one more force acting. What is it? The ground, the normal force, yeah, same, same thing, right? The ground pushing up, the normal force pushing up. And it's, the value of that normal force is going to be the same as gravity. So what do we know about gravity and normal force? They cancel, and that's what we do, right? We draw all the forces, but then we cancel things that oppose each other so that we can simplify it a little bit. That's good, because now I've got all my forces acting on the x-axis, not a combination of x and y. If, we, if those didn't cancel, and we had x and y, uh, we could do it, deal with that, and we will deal with that, but it's harder than what we're doing here right now. Yep. So we have to the you know what? If you left those off, I wouldn't mark that wrong okay? because they cancel out. But it is a good habit to include them because there will be times when they don't cancel. And if you just never do it, then you're probably going to forget when they don't cancel. You're going to forget to do it, and then you're going to get it wrong. So you forget it this time. It's okay, um, but if you can, try to get in the habit of putting them in there so that when it does matter, that you're not going to forget them. All right, let's, let's uh, do our thing. What's the next step here? 
Rachel? Yeah, the net force, the total force is the sum of the forces. We're going to say FF plus FA plus FB. Could I have changed the order of these forces? Absolutely, absolutely. Tim, what's 1 plus 2 plus 3? 1 plus 2 plus 3. Is that 6? Yes, it is. That's why I asked Tim, because I knew he'd know that one. Hey, smart guy here. Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. Uh, here's, a, here's a harder one here. Hey, George, you ready for this one? 2 plus 1 plus 3. 2 plus 1 plus three. 6. Look at that. Didn't even get to finish it the second time. Dammy, what's uh, 3 plus 1 plus 2? What's 3 plus 1 plus 2? So it doesn't matter what order I add numbers in, right? I forget what property of math you call that. Whatever. Doesn't. What is it? Community property, property when it doesn't matter what order you add them in. Okay. Um, so 1 plus 2 plus 3, 2 plus 1 plus 3, 3 plus 1 plus 2. It doesn't matter what order we add them in. FF plus FA plus FB, FB plus FA plus FF. doesn't make any difference, right? We're going to get the same values here. Um, we want to find the, net, the acceleration. So we're going to replace F net with M times A and keep it equal to FF plus FA plus FB. And now we're going to sub our numbers in here. The mass here that we care about at least is 450, not 630, because two guys aren't in the sled, times the acceleration equals the force of friction is 430 plus FA is 1220 plus FB is 1200. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, the 430 should be negative because it's acting to the left. That's part of the reason we draw our diagram is to remind us of that, right? Uh, so let's uh, add these up on the right-hand side now. 1220 plus 1200 is 2420. 2420 uh, minus 430, I think, is going to be 1990. Uh, 1990 on the, on the right side, 450 times A on the right side, divide by 450, and A ends up giving me, I assume, 4.4 meters per second squared. I got a positive value for it, so that means it's forward, right? Which makes sense. If you're pushing this bobsled forward, well, let me tell you this. If you're pushing the bobsled forward and it's going backwards, you're not a very good pusher. Okay? Yeah. It would mean probably that you're trying to push it uphill which would not be a very good strategy when you're trying to bobsled. Let's do another example, page 151. This one says a person and an elevator have a combined mass of 600 kilograms. The elevator cable exerts a force of 6,500 newtons up. On the elevator, find the acceleration of the person. OK, let's kind of work through this together by drawing a picture. Here's the elevator. Here's the person in the elevator. Now, by rights, we don't actually have to include the mass there, but we will. The free body diagram technically shows only forces, but if it's convenient to put mass in there, it's certainly OK to do that. Uh, it is 600, yes, you're right. Thank you. All right, what force or forces do I have acting on this elevator? Give me one. Maybe there is only one. Got to be something, though. What's going to happen to this elevator if there are no forces? It's going to stay at rest, right? Or if it was already moving, it would stay moving. There's gravity acting down, right? So let's say um, there's the force of gravity acting down. OK. Anything else? Yeah, Demi? Yes, the cable is pulling up. Let's label that up here. It doesn't really matter where I label it again, as long as I, as long as I uh, label it in the right direction and show it roughly the right magnitude. I'm going to call it FC. The force of the cable is 6,500 newtons, or 6.50 times 10 to the 3. Now, drawing this to the right length is a little bit of a, a challenge here right now, actually. We know the force upward is 6,500 newtons. We don't actually know the force of gravity yet, right? So in this case, if you don't draw them the right length, it's actually OK. Any more forces? All right, let's say the net force 
is equal to the sum of the forces. That's going to be Fc plus Fg. M times A is equal to Fc plus Fg. What's the mass we use here? 600 kilograms. But wait a second. If we use 600 kilograms, aren't we finding the, the acceleration of the elevator? What are we looking for? The acceleration of the person, right? Um, well, the 600 is the mass of both of them together already. So we're finding the, ma the acceleration of both of them. I mean, think about that. Does the person not accelerate at the same rate as the elevator? I hope so. That would be weird. It would be kind of fun, actually. Yes, if it's accelerating downward quicker than you're accelerating, then you're going to start floating in air. Like it's like you'd be like being in space. But the bottom line is here, guys, the person does accelerate at the same rate as the elevator, so we use the total mass of the elevator and the person here, 600 kilograms. The upward force is 6,500 kilograms. Now, we don't know the force of gravity, but we can figure that out, right? It's just going to be 600 kilograms times 9.81, correct? Not 600, not 9.81, 600 times 9.81. Is that right? Yeah, Matty? Yes, because the force of gravity is downward. Now, I don't care whether you put the negative in front of the 9.81 or in front of the 600. It makes no difference. That term, force of gravity, needs to be a negative value. All right, uh, let's, let's pull out the calculator and do some calculations on this one because I can't do this one in my head here. 600 times 9.81, I believe it's 5886. Let's go from scratch, though. The negative 600 times 9.81. Okay, that's negative 5886. We're going to add to that 6,500. And then what are we going to do? We get 600 equals 600A equals 614. How do we solve for A? Divide by 600. 1.02 meters per second squared. It's a positive value, so which way is the acceleration, up or down? Up. Yeah, and that makes sense, right? Look, your, your force of gravity was 5886. Your force of the cable is 6500. The force up is bigger. It's going to accelerate upward. We know now that we really should have drawn gravity a little bit smaller, but you don't need to redraw it. Okay, we didn't know at the beginning of the question uh, how big it should be, so I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't zing you marks on that one if you drew it longer than it really should be. All right, let's have a look, please, at uh, page 152, the two questions there. Let's take a look at number two here. It says an electric chain hoist in a garage exerts a force of 2.8 times 10 to the 3 newtons up on an engine. The acceleration of the engine is 1.5. What's the mass of the engine? So um, similar type question we did as an example, except that we're solving for a different variable here. That's OK. Set it up here. Here's the engine. The en we don't know what the mass of the engine is, but we do know that the force of the cable or the force of the chain is 2.85 times 10 to the 3 newtons up. We know there's a force of gravity, right? And it's acting down. And we actually know this time that the force of gravity is smaller than the force upwards, right? How do you know that? How do we know that Fg is smaller than the force of the chain pulling this engine upwards? Because it accelerates up. If the force of the chain was big, was smaller than gravity, then it would accelerate down, right? Uh, we also know the acceleration. I don't have to include that, but I'm going to do it because I got to I got to write down my givens. I've already got a diagram, right? So I might as well. So I might as well include it here. Now let's set it up. F net is equal to the sum of the forces here. We're going to say Fc plus Fg. Right, Mackenzie? Mm -hmm. F net is M times A. Listen, we don't know what M is. That's okay. 
Like, just like in Unit 1, we were doing all those group B equations. You know, we said, like, listen, just try it. If it's valid, try it. It doesn't matter if you know exactly how you're going to get your answer. Same thing here. We're looking for mass. We've never done one where we're looking for mass. That's OK. Just do what is right. And it's amazing how sometimes it just kind of works out here. Uh, FC, we do know is, uh, here, let's, let's fill this in like this right now. Let's say M times A. A is 1.50. OK, FC is positive 2.85 times 10 to the 3 newtons plus, what's FG? M times negative 9.81. OK, it's again there. Mathematically, this is a little tricky right now. How about I ask you, this? here, let's, uh, let's just simplify this a little bit first here. This is the same as 1.5m, agree? OK, equals 2.85 times 10 to the 3, or 2850, subtract 9.81m. Does that make sense, what I just did there? OK, here's a question for you. Maddie, if I said, what's one apple plus two apples? What would be the answer? Three apples. Three apples. OK. If I said, what's 1m plus 2m? 1m plus 2m, Francis, what would it be? One apple plus two apples is three apples. 1m plus 2m is 3m. OK. So if I said 1.5m plus 9.81m, because that's subtracted, right? Take it over to the other side by adding. 1.5m plus 9.81m is going to be 11.31m, right? 1.5 plus 9.81 is 11.31m. Josh doesn't need a calculator for that. He's kidding. Equals 2850. Now we're going to say 2850 divided by 11.31 gives me 252. Do you see what we did there? That is, uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility to get something like that on a test, but I would say that that's trickier than average. That's a harder question than average. We're going to do one more example. One more example. Um, and then uh, and we'll let you work on a couple questions, and then that'll be it before the break here. Uh, this one says, a skydiver is jumping out of an airplane. During the first few seconds of one jump, the parachute is unopened. The magnitude of air resistance acting on the skydiver is 2 250 newtons. The acceleration of the skydiver is 5.96 down. What's the mass of the skydiver? Boy, this, uh, this reminds me a lot of the last question, actually. Find the mass here. Here's the skydiver. Here's the skydiver. Uh, we know that there's a force of air resistance acting up. I'll call that FA, and it's 250 newtons. We know that we have gravity acting down. Is gravity smaller or bigger than air resistance here? Gravity's bigger. We know that because it's accelerating downward, right? No, hold on. Hold on. Wait. There are times when you're skydiving that air resistance is bigger than gravity. It doesn't mean, no, it doesn't mean you go up. It doesn't mean you go up. If you're moving down and air resistance is bigger, then it just means you're, you continue to move down, but slow down. Does that make sense? That's how a parachute works. That's how a parachute works, exactly, yeah. Now, at some point, at some point, the upward force and the downward force end up balancing each other, and then you continue moving down at a constant speed, right, when the forces are balanced. It's called terminal velocity at that point. Okay, so this is the force of gravity. We know the acceleration is downward, and it's going to be negative 5.96, negative because it's downward. So let's set this up here. Let's say F net is equal to the sum of the forces, FA plus FG. Uh, M times A is equal to FA plus FG. We're going to say M times negative 5.96 equals 250 upwards plus uh, M times negative 9.81. This is remarkably like that last question, right? 
negative 5.96m equals 250, subtract 9.81m. Take this over to the other side by adding. We're going to say negative 5.96 plus 9.81 comes over to the left side by adding. Gives me 3.85. 3.85m equals 250, and we divide uh, 250 by 3.85, and we, had, and we end up getting 64.9. Does that seem reasonable for the mass of a skydiver? Yeah, it's probably about the mass of a lot of you guys, 65 kilograms. Some of you guys are a little bit more, some of you guys are a little bit less. On average, it's probably somewhere around there. Here. All right, take a look at these two questions, please, and then that'll be it for us.